had somebody reach out to me and ask about these water gel crystals that I use to hydrate the mealworms. Uh, and so I'm going to show what they look like when they're dry, um, and show you know the process to make them uh, get them hydrated, and then show what they look like once they are hydrated. Uh, so let's start with dry crystals. Here we go. You can hear them. So these are just dry. These are large crystals. They come in different sizes. I like the large crystal because it doesn't stick together as much. And I'll show you what I mean by that once uh, once we start looking at the hydrated crystals. Uh, but these guys, as you can see, are fairly large. And this is one pound of the crystals. And I've got water there. You can see the mark on the left. Uh, that's the um, one pound mark for me. When it comes to how much water to crystal ratio, what I'm finding is that it honestly depends on your water. Um, some people find that when they use the mixing uh, recipe on my website, MidwestMealworms.com, they say that they're too dry or they're too wet. Uh, and honestly, what I tell people is tinker with it, adjust it. So make a batch of it using the ratios on the website. And then if it's too wet, add less moisture uh, uh, or more crystals and vice versa, right? Get it to a consistency that works for you uh, because not everybody's water is the same. So. Uh, start simple, start with a small batch, and then take notes and adjust from there. But it's fairly straightforward, the water's in there. And that's it. And it'll start absorbing pretty quickly. I'm going to go look at the batch that's already been made. Uh, but you can see it's down at the bottom there. Uh, it's not perfectly evenly distributed here, and that's okay. Uh, because it'll start to absorb and start to kind of shift around. Uh, at one point, I tried messing around with making it more even on the bottom, but that's just a waste of effort and time. There's no point to do that. This will make a perfectly fine batch. Put the lid on, let it sit. It'll probably take about four to six hours. Uh, it does depend on the water temperature um, as far as how quickly it does that. Uh, usually, I just let it sit overnight. And now I'm trying to find, there's my other batch. Uh, I've got two containers of it. Let me get this one uh, opened up for you. All right, so here's a batch of completed crystals, hydrated crystals. So here's what they look like. They're not dripping wet. I don't want them dripping wet. That's a personal choice here and a process choice here. If these are dripping wet, when I go to get handfuls of this and throw it into a container, it's going to slop water uh, and a little bit of this stuff mixed in with the water that just hasn't absorbed into a crystal um, is going to slop all that around. Uh, and so I find that the um, texture like this, like this feels like jello to me that you would eat, right? Like jello that's been refrigerated. None of this has been refrigerated. So this is just how it looks in the ambient temperature of 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, but you can see these are pretty large crystals. And so what I do is I will literally just take these and throw them into a tray. Um, but that's what they look like there. So I mentioned earlier large versus other sizes. Um, what I found when I tested the smaller sizes is that they clump together and stay together. You can see how these kind of break apart, right? And that's, that's good from my perspective. I want to try to get as much as possible across the whole breadth of the tray. When I used smaller crystals, um, I think there's micro, small, and medium. Uh, when I used those, this stayed clumped together, like it would just stick together. Uh, and it would make it a lot harder to throw it across the tray. It just wouldn't spread out as much. Uh, and so I stick with the large crystals. Um, I just take this guy, get a scoop, and then go fill some trays. Both of the containers are on dollies so that we can roll them around and take them where we need to. And then it's just a matter of coming down to the trays, like these guys here. Well, that's a bad example because there's clean trays on one side. Here we go. So here's the beetle trays. So all we're gonna do is go and touch and throw crystals into each and every one of these and do it for all of the trays in the farm. The beetles get one handful three times a week. Uh, the larger worms get one handful three times a week. The smaller worms, uh, usually about four weeks, we'll start hydrating with half a handful and then we switch about four to six weeks later to a large handful uh, because the larger worms will eat faster. 
I think that's everything. Oh, gloves. So I didn't wear gloves in this example. Um, I very rarely touch these without gloves. Uh, they're not caustic. They're not. Uh, they're not going to harm you. Uh, but I look at it from an exposure perspective. Similar to why I wear this full face respirator. If I expose myself enough to stuff, uh, you're going to have complications and issues with it, right? And so we touch that stuff three times a week, multiple times. You know, we got to fill a couple thousand trays. Um, and so we'll wear gloves. Uh, the other thing is it's it's just kind of ugh, right? Um, and so if you had to constantly go back and forth between uh, this feeling and then scooping, it just it becomes a, an issue. So it's just easier to clean that off that way. But also, uh, no exposure uh, since we are always consistently touching these crystals uh, by hand. We'll wear the standard latex gloves or standard nit nitrile uh, gloves. So uh, if you have any questions, let me know.